Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Physiosaurus. This is going to be my first video in 2024, so I wish everyone a very very happy new year first of all. Now, in this video I am going to discuss about the posterior cruciate ligament. In short, it is also known as PCL. Okay? In the previous video of knee complex, we were studying about the ACL ligament or the anterior cruciate ligament. Okay, the format of the video will be the same exactly uh, as we were discussing in the previous video. Okay, so first we will talk about the attachments of the posterior cruciate ligament. Okay, so the posterior cruciate ligament or the PCL it attaches to the posterior tibial spine and lateral aspect of the medial femoral condyle. So basically, it attaches to the Posterior tibial spine in the previous video, I was talking about the tibial spine as you can see here in this picture, in this diagram. This is your tibial spine. One, it is, one is located anteriorly and one is a little bit posterior, okay? So, PCL is attached to the posterior tibial spine and then it goes superiorly and anterior to ACL ligament, anterior collateral ligament and it finally attaches to the lateral aspect of the medial femoral condyle. Just look at this diagram here. So if you will look at this diagram, this ligament is your ACL ligament, alright? And this one is your mid medial condyle, okay? Now if you will look at the medial condyle, in the medial condyle this side will be your medial side and this side will be your lateral side, okay? This side will be your lateral side and as you can see here, this ligament which is your posterior cruciate ligament, it is arised from the anterior tibial spine which is somewhat here which is not visible in this diagram but still you can imagine it, okay? And then it goes superiorly and anteriorly to the ACL ligament, this uh, whole ligament is your PCL ligament, okay? So it goes anteriorly and towards the lateral aspect of the medial condyle of the femur, okay? So this was the attachment of the PCL ligament. So just like the ACL, PCL is also intracapsular which means it lies within the capsule of the knee joint, but it is extra synovial. What does extra synovial mean? So it basically it is not surrounded by the synovial fluid. It is not surrounded by the synovial fluid. Now PCL is little bit shorter and it is less oblique than the ACL. Okay. And it has 120 to 150% more cross sectional area than the ACL. So if you will take a cross sectional area of PCL and ACL, if you will study uh, comparatively, so the PCL will have 120 to 150% more cross sectional area. Similar to the ACL, okay, there are again two bands of the PCL which is named according to their tibial origin, okay. So uh, one band arises from the anteromedial aspect of the tibia and one band from the posterolateral aspect of the tibia. And this is why there are two bands of PCL just like the ACL and it is anteromedial band and the posteromedial band, okay, two band. Now similarly, in case of ACL, similarly, same wise here, the anteromedial band, it is taught maximally at the 80 to 90 degrees of knee flexion, but it is lax or loose at full extension, all right. But if you will talk about the PLB, okay, it is lax at lax or loose at 80 to 90 degrees of flexion, but it is taught at full extension, okay? Now, the next heading is function of the PCL ligament. One of the most important function of the PCL ligament is it restricts the posterior displacement of the tibia, okay? So, it basically um, give resistance to the posterior displacement of tibia. Along with that, it also resists tibial medial rotation at 90 degree, but in a very minimal amount in the full extension, okay? So when uh, knee is at 90 degree, 
it resists the tibial medial rotation basically medial rotation of the tibia but it does not resist much in uh, in full extension of the knee okay i have added a little bit of note here that it does not resist lateral rotation so basically the function of the pcl is limited to the restriction of the medial rotation but not the lateral rotation okay and there is again a case in the medial rotation is uh, and that case is basically it will only resist tibial medial rotation when the knee is at 90 degree but, uh, but when the knee is in full extension it restricts the medial rotation at a very minimal amount all right now in fully extended knee pcl will absorb 93% of the load directing posteriorly all right so this is why uh, in fully extended knee your pcl restricts posterior displacement in full extension in very minimal amount all right so basically what happening here is when your knee is fully extended your pcl ligament will actually absorb a lot of weight weight or load which is directing posterior to the knee joint okay so this is why when the weight will be towards the posterior side automatically it will restrict the posterior displacement so that is why pcl restricts posterior displacement in full extension in very minimal amount why because it absorbs 93% of the load directing posteriorly okay now let's read the next point so the next point says that the maximal tibial displacement of the tibia it occurs from 75 degrees to 90 degrees of knee flexion but since the uh, range of motion the normal range of motion for knee flexion is 145 degrees up to 145 degrees so when you will go more than 90 degrees of range of motion in knee joint so with greater knee flexion pcl restricts posterior displacement at greater degrees of flexion all right so basically if you will summarize this first point and this second point you will come into a conclusion that pcl restricts posterior displacement of tibia to its maximum capacity when the knee is at greater degrees of flexion okay but it restricts posterior displacement of tibia to its very minimal amount when the knee is in full extension the next function of the pcl ligament is that it restricts varus and the valgus stress at your knee joint which is very similar to the function of acl ligament now varus and valgus stress at your knee joint is produced when there is passive abduction and adduction of tibia okay so this was the last function of the pcl ligament so now let's move on to our next topic which is your clinical anatomy next subheading okay so basically when there is absence of the pcl ligament then the muscles are trained to stabilize against the excessive posterior tibial translation so basically uh, when there is absence of pcl what will happen since the main function of the pcl the primary function of the pcl is to restrict the posterior displacement of tibia so if tibia will be absent then muscles are trained to stabilize against the excessive posterior tibial translation all right now there are some muscles which are clinically relevant to pcl injury what are those muscles let me give you an overview about it so the first muscle is popliteus muscle second is your hamstring third is your gastrocnemius and fourth one is your quadriceps now let's understand their relevance so popliteus muscle it helps in resisting excessive posterior translation of the tibia and it contributes to knee stability when pcl is absent all right nothing to explain here now let's move on to the hamstring uh, muscle so hamstring muscle contraction it destabilizes the knee joint so basically popliteus muscle is kind of a friend to your pcl ligament but hamstring is is a kind of enemy to your pcl ligament all right now along with that hamstring muscle contraction destabilizes the knee joint in absence of pcl why 
because it produces the posterior translation all right so that's the reason behind it now again the third muscle is your gastrocnemius so when the gastrocnemius muscle will contract it will produce strain in the pcl at flexion angle greater than 40 degrees so when the flexion angle will be more than 40 degrees contraction of the gastrocnemius will produce strain in the pcl so gastrocnemius muscle is again a enemy to your pcl ligament the next is your quadriceps contraction that's the last muscle so quadriceps contraction it reduces the strain in pcl when the knee flexion angle is between 20 degrees to 60 degrees all right so this was about that effect of the muscle on the pcl ligament all right so here is a short uh, note which i have added here the mechanism of injury however this topic will be dealt in some other videos when i will only discuss about the pcl injury in detail okay and by detail means i will discuss about its physiotherapy management including the exercise protocol and everything but i am just giving you an overview that pcl the mechanism of pcl injury is it can be injured during hyperflexion injury okay anterior or dashboard injury we will deal about it what is anterior or dashboard injury okay and fall on the flexed knee with plantar flexed foot so these are the three ways that you can hurt your pcl ligament okay so this was all about the pcl ligament i hope that this video is very helpful to you irrespective of anything if you have any kind of doubts left in your brain okay while studying your synthian organs you can always always ask me in your comment box okay so thank you so much for watching this video